Hi, this is Todd with EsotericCarCare.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Bigfoot Polishers by Rufus. Bigfoot Polishers by Rupus. Uh, there's two different models here in the lineup. There's the LHR15 and the LHR21. These are both dual action machines uh, and the number designation indicates how much throw or orbit uh, that it has. 21 with 21 millimeter and the 15 with 15 millimeter. We'll get into some details about um, these here in just a moment, but first I wanna talk a little bit about the product line overall and the company. Um, this company, Rupus, has been around since 1947. This is not something new that they've been uh, getting into. They're based out of Milan, Italy, uh, and they have been creating um, very innovative, highly effective tools for quite some time now. Uh, matter of fact, when we took on uh, the line, we were um, one of two distributors in the United States, the very first to take on the product line. And when we met Rupus at uh, the SEMA show in Las Vegas, uh, geez, it's been about four and a half years ago uh, now, there were only three of us in the country who had an opportunity to work with the first machine. It was one machine here in the United States. It made some rounds to a couple of us and two out of three of us uh, became the very first distributors. Uh, we found out that, that these had the opportunity to completely change the way detailing or paint correction is being done. Uh, up to that point, we'd already switched uh, on compounding side from a rotary to dual action, but we were still doing our finish polishing with, uh, with a rotary. Now enter uh, the Rupus polishers uh, with the kind of performance that you get out of it. They're coming out with 15 and 20 millimeter orbits, whereas other machines on the market traditionally were only about eight millimeter. Uh, and if we're talking in mathematical terms, if we had one with 10 and one with 20, in the same workspace size, the same work time, that 20 millimeter throw is gonna give you twice as much polishing action in the same amount of time as, as the lower end. So you can see going from eight millimeter to say 21, that's a, a big, big difference. And it was incredibly smooth compared to what anything else uh, was out there. So we saw right away uh, that, that, that these could really change the face of the industry. And uh, we committed very early to the product line and to the company and to the philosophy that, uh, that they had behind their, their design and manufacturing. So I had went over uh, to Milan and visited with uh, them. Actually, we were the first American distributors to visit uh, their factory and uh, spent a day with them, built up some relationships, had a great time. But while I was there, I got to find out just how much development that goes into this machine. At the Rupus factory, they do all of their R&D in-house, they do all of their manufacturing in-house, and the vast majority of everything that goes into building this is made in-house in, in uh, Milan, Italy. Very, very impressive to see just how much development. It was also really cool too, they have a, a museum there at their factory that you can see a lot of the tools throughout the years, um, items that have been really innovative and, and changed the way uh, people, uh, people work. So having said that, uh, we got up uh, and running with these and, and, and made these a main part of our Elite Detailer Academy. And we were also the first uh, training center in the world to be designated as an authorized ROOPS uh, training center. Uh, and we've been using them ever since. We have students come in from around the world to learn how to maximize uh, these machines and get the best results out of it. Because with the performance that they get, you can do in two steps with this, polish to perfection, what before would take you three steps on a rotary. Unfortunately, there's still some people um, think that it takes three steps uh, to do uh, perfection polishing on the ROOPS machine, but rest assured, it could be done in, uh, in just two. How do we know that? Well, we've been teaching that process for many years, and also we've got our row point DOI meter that we use to evaluate systems and techniques and polishes and pads to find the best uh, results in it. And if you want more information on uh, this DOI meter and how we use it, we've uh, recently created another video uh, on that. It kind of goes into to detail exactly what we measure. Uh, anyhow, back, uh, back to the machines. They really changed the face of the, the, the detailing industry, how people are doing paint polishing, uh, and it's really a shame that, that not more people are using it. 
granted, these are the most popular machines in the industry, but relative to how many people are working with polishers uh, in their hand, particularly when you look at body shops and reconditioning centers, things of that nature, they're still using a rotary with a great big dirty old wool pad. Um, it just doesn't, uh, doesn't work. Um, these are gonna give you better cut, better finish, less time, safer, and easier to train staff than what you can ever get with a rotary. Uh, additionally, when it comes to clarity and gloss that you can extract out of these, some people may think, well, this would be good for doing most of your work, but if you want to do fine level clarity and, and gloss extraction, you need to use a rotary. Once again, we've done testing, extensive testing with our DOI meter, comparing the dual action machines of the Rupus um, Bigfoot polishers to a rotary and we get zero difference uh, in the readings in gloss or clarity uh, afterwards. So there's no need to use a rotary for us. The only thing we use a rotary for is spin drying pads after we've, uh, we've washed them. We continually test back and forth and uh, we always come to the same conclusion, better cut, better finish, less time with a dual action. Okay, now on to some specifics uh, about the machine. Like I said, they come in two different uh, versions, the, the 15 and the 21. The biggest difference between them, obviously, is the, uh, the, the orbit they have, 15 millimeter versus 21 millimeter. Also with the 21, this comes with a larger backing plate. This backing plate is designed for a six and a half inch pad, whereas on the 15, it comes with a smaller backing plate that is designed for a five and a half inch pad. And the question is, can you interchange the two? Well, on the 21, you can remove this pad and you can put the same backing plate uh, as on the 15 if you like using a five and a half inch pad. Whereas on the 15, you could put the larger backing plate on it, but your balance is gonna be off uh, quite a bit. So it's not recommended to try to do both sizes on the 15, but it's okay to do it on the 21. So those are the big differences uh, between the two. The housing, the body, the ergonomics, everything, absolutely the same uh, between them. Uh, now these are the, the latest Mark II machines. They came out with the original machine uh, years ago. These just came out this past year. Uh, they've got a little bit more power output, um, even better balance than what it had before, which is already uh, very impressive. And a few other features, it's easy to, to tell. Um, this has the, the white um, soft grip underneath, whereas the original ESs did not. And the biggest way to tell is you look at this uh, pad that's on top of it. This is convenient when you're setting the machine down in between polishing, it won't tip over on you. And that's the easiest way to tell. And it's a very, very nice feature to it. Um, you have got your speed adjustability here, um, very nice uh, trigger throttle, and it's got a trigger lock, uh, we call cruise control here in the shop, uh, which is nice because you just turn it on, click it in place, and you don't have to hold it for long periods of time. Uh, makes it a lot easier on your hands. Uh, and then you just depress it again and it will release it. Uh, the machine also comes with built-in. You've got a tool for changing out your backing plate. Backing plate is gonna be a wear item. Um, after time, the hook and loop uh, is gonna start to break down. You need to replace it, uh, which it's, it's no big deal. And what I wanna do is I wanna go over the replacement process and also show you if you wanted to switch from a large backing plate to a smaller backing plate. And while we're at it too, we're gonna to talk about um, another option that you have with it, with the backing plates, that has become pretty popular and people ask questions about all the time. Uh, if you notice, when I go to spin this, it stops. The backing plate is designed to ride up against this called the anti-spin mechanism. And the reason why Rupus did that is because with the foam pad that goes on it, they didn't want people to have it on full speed off of the surface and go down onto the surface because the kind of speeds that, that can generate is too much for a pad and you can end up having a pad explode on you and you definitely don't want that to happen. First of all, you shouldn't be using a machine having it uh, completely turned on off of the surface. But, uh, so you, you really don't get any spin here. Well, what you can do is you can space that out so you get a little bit more free spin. What that does is that just frees up a few orbits there, gives you just a little bit uh, extra performance. Now, having said that, um, you know, we've seen claims out there, people talking 50% increase in performance. 
that's not the case in the least bit. Uh, you can talk to Rupus uh, directly, they will verify that. We have once again verified it with our DOI meter. We can do tests on it. We can see what is working, what's not. Is there an increase, is there not an increase? You really don't see a, a, a noticeable increase on it, but some people like to do it. Another thing that we would want to do it for is if you don't want to get in the habit of oiling the top of your backing plate, this rubber shroud can get a little bit hot and then it can start you know, taking little rubber uh, pieces, send them flying. You don't want those on the surface as you're working with it. So by spacing that out, it prevents that from happening. And if you run a busy shop like we do, stopping and, and um, lightly oiling the top of this is not something you always have time for. So let's take a look at uh, the process here. And inside here, there is just a simple Allen bolt. Put that in. Get this removed. And then what you'll notice on the bottom of the backing plate is it's got a cutout here. And it's got a matching piece on the inside. So the backing plate fits firmly in there. Now, if you want to switch this out, like in this case, you want to switch it out to a five inch backing plate and you want to install a washer. This is a standard M8 washer, nothing special. There's, there's no particular item. You probably have one of these sitting in your toolbox. Nothing special is required to make this work. All you're doing is spacing it out just a little bit. So I'm gonna put that in between the machine and the backing plate. I'm gonna line it up. And then you'll notice when you're moving it around, it'll fit down into that slot so you know you've got it secure. Tighten it back up. Make sure you got it nice and secure. And then when it's done, you can see it spins freely. So uh, that's a very simple process to switch this out if you either want to go to a six and a half inch pad to a five and a half inch pad, uh, or if your backing plate starts to wear down. The way you notice it wears down, you can take a new pad and put on it. And if it doesn't hold very strong, probably time to, to switch out your backing plate. If you're going through backing plates um, uh, on a frequent basis, you're running at too high of a speed, you're generating too much heat, and it's causing this to break down. Now, speaking of speeds, where you wanna be on these is you wanna be like on the 15, four and a half is kind of a magical number. It goes up to six, you don't need six. Most of the times you don't need five. It's more speed isn't going to give you quicker correction on it. Uh, what it's gonna do is with the extra speed and the extra power, that translates into heat. Heat that's gonna come right here at the center of your backer plate. And that's gonna prematurely wear out your backing plate and it's gonna burn up pads quickly. So if you're going through pads, I see people talking about this with say Meguiar's microfiber pads that they don't last. Well, no, they do last a long time. If you're having that problem, there's an issue with the technique or you're running it at too high of a speed or a combination of both. We can use these uh, forever here in our shop. We rarely go through backing plates. We rarely go through uh, pads. They will last a long time. So speeds, the 15, four and a half is your friend. And on the 21, speed four is your friend. Occasionally we might go up to four and a half uh, if necessary, but you really don't need any more than that. It's not going to, uh, it's not going to make the, the job any uh, quicker. Um, as far as working with it, you know, with, with polishing in general, you want to work with smaller areas. If you're working in terms of half of a hood, you're not doing anything. You're spreading polish around. You're not going through a breakdown cycle. You're not getting the kind of performance. Uh, so by bringing your work area in smaller, keeping your arm speed slower, 50% overlapping passes, you're going to get really good results with it. So if you're using one of these and you're still having to go three steps to get it completely finished, you're probably using too much product. You're working in too big of an area. You've got too fast arm speed. There's something going wrong in the technique there that's preventing you to get a perfect finish, even on very rough paint. Two steps uh, is all you need to, uh, to get that to, to perfection. So there we have it, the 15, the 21. Um, why would you use one over the other? We get that question all the time. Another thing that we've seen 
comments, uh, uh, be it on forums or people come to us because they heard somebody say on a forum, they say the, the 15 is for polishing, the 21 is for compounding. That couldn't be further from uh, the truth. And if somebody's saying that, they either have a specific agenda they're trying to push or they uh, need to work on their techniques a little bit. Uh, because here in the shop, we use 15 most of the time. Uh, and we get plenty of cars in bad, bad condition. So 15 is what we use most of the time. 15 is what we have always sold more than the 21. 21 is a fantastic machine. Typically speaking, there are two times when we will grab this over the 15. If we have a vehicle with large surface area, somebody comes in with an Escalade, then it makes more sense to use the bigger backing plate with a larger pad. Uh, or if we've got very, very heavy defects um, on real hard paint or, or we're trying to do some kind of texture removal on it, we'll go with a little bit extra cut that you get with the 21. So as a, as a uh, consumer, if you're looking to buy one of these, uh, you got to ask yourself what kind of vehicles you're going to be working on. If you have your own cars at home, uh, you've got a sports car, you've got a, a regular vehicle, the 15 is probably all you need. If you're working on some larger vehicles, you like working with uh, the larger pads, you can go with a 21, then you have got the ability to use both a six and a half inch, or if you buy the, uh, the additional smaller backing plate, you can go with a five and a half uh, inch there. And one thing to keep in mind too, when it comes to cut and performance, uh, on the 21, since you can switch both of them out, with the smaller pad, you will get better performance out of it. It's just the opposite. On a rotary, the bigger the pad, the more uh, cut that you have. With the uh, DA, the smaller the pad, the more cut that you get. And you also get more control with it on the, the, uh, the smaller pad than you do with the big pad. If you're working with a lot of contours, you know, here we're working on a lot of uh, exotics or cars with, with uh, curves and contours, it's better to have a smaller pad uh, that you're working with. So you can't go wrong with, uh, with either. And if you're asking that question of which machine, you know, I like them, which machine should I buy? You have to ask the question of where you're gonna be using it, how you're gonna be using it. Do you want to use larger pads? Uh, does that really matter to you? Uh, if it doesn't matter, go with the 15. 15 has more than enough performance for you. If you wanna have some flexibility, big pads and small pads, uh, or if most of what you're doing is just really badly beat up uh, paint, or if you're in a body shop um, environment where uh, you, you know, everything has been sanded down first, then you might want to consider the 21 uh, over the 15. Otherwise, uh, you know, a little bit of difference uh, in the price of them, um, it, it, it's not that much. It just depends on what you want to get out of the machines. And we'll have more videos uh, later uh, when it comes to specific techniques with the machine. And we also have plenty of videos out there of which pads and polish combinations uh, seem to work best depending on, on what environment uh, that you're working in. Uh, but don't just take my word on how great these machines are. Take a look at our website, esotericcarcare.com. Go to the uh, pages for the 21 or the 15, read some reviews that others have left behind. And if you're a current owner of them, we definitely appreciate you taking some time to leave a review uh, for us. On our video series on, on YouTube, make sure you go in after you get done watching this and you subscribe to our channel because we constantly have new uh, material, new videos on tools, techniques, and, uh, and products. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, don't forget to share this video and others of ours on your favorite automotive and or detailing forums. We appreciate you help spread uh, the word of the educational material that we're providing here at esotericcarcare.com. Well, been a long video. We appreciate you uh, hanging out. There's a lot of information to talk about with uh, the Rupus uh, Bigfoot Polishers. Um, for esotericcarcare.com, Rupus Bigfoot Polishing System, I'm Todd Cooprider. Thanks. We'll see you again next time.